Hey guys, this is GB Wang, and I'm going to be showing you guys a team a team games video today. So I guess my claim to fame was that in season three, I ended up hitting masters rank one in uh, threes and fours games, and so I wanted to show share with you guys some of the strategies that I use, as well as some of the strategies that my friends use um, in order to be effective in these team games, and so. Uh, here here uh, we have me. I'm spawning as a Zerg player right now, and my friend, Best of Seven, who also happens to live near me, he's spawning as a Protoss player. I think in this matchup, what happened was we knew that there was one Zerg player, but the other player was random, so we weren't exactly sure. We had to scout a little bit early. Um, so one of the things with uh, team games, as you can see I'm chatting right now, is that uh, is good communication. It's always helpful to let your teammates know what build that you're going, and scouting, of course, is always useful as well. Um, Protoss tends to make the best scout because they have um, a probe that can regenerate their shields, so their scouts usually last a little bit longer. Um, I do want to mention, so this game, uh, Best of Seven and I, we're both Masters League players in twos, and so this was, uh, as a Masters League game, one of the strategies that, that is commonly used for Zerg is the 10 pool. The reason for that is that the 10 pool opens up, the attack window for Zerg opens up earlier than any other race, and so it's always a good idea to use... Um, you know, to take advantage of this this uh, window. Unfortunately for us, it looks like these Zerg players, they both went double 10 pool. As you can see, their spawning pool just came up at about the same time that my pool is, and now they're going to start churning out uh, Zerglings to attack us. And this is really bad, because one, um, my friend, he spawned as Protoss, and unfortunately in team games, Protoss is the worst race just because their attack windows open up so slowly and it leaves them vulnerable, and there's kind of a small window of time where it's kind of like 2v1, where I'm the only one with the army and he's not going to be able to have much. What makes this situation a little bit worse, too, is he also had a build order fail. He didn't quite realize that, um, that there were two Zerg players early on, and so, you know, he had a gateway up, and uh, he realized what what had happened with the double ten pool, so the appropriate response is to throw up a forge, which he did. Unfortunately, if these Zerg players ended up attacking him first, he would have been dead. He, there's no way that he would have been able to get a cannon up on time, but fortunately for him, they attack me. But both Zerg players, they go all in. I had just stopped a spine crawler from coming up from the blue guy, and now Red, he's uh, he's throwing up a spine crawler, and he's got lings as well. So I'm trying my best to. Um, uh, to try to to try to salvage this, and I throw down a spine crawler, and unfortunately, what I do is I end up. Uh I end up making more and more lings, but this is really, it's kind of a lose-lose situation for me because both of these guys are kind of ganging up on me, and they have more lings, so there's no way I can trade um, units with them. But also, um, what I end up doing is I make a really critical mistake. I end up lifting my my spine crawler uh, to reposition and try to get closer to that the other guy's spine crawler. But by doing that, I end up losing all of my drones um, just to stop that spine crawler. Now the appropriate response, what I should have done, was actually throw up more spine crawlers to defend. And when you know it's very difficult for them to attack me, just kind of drone up in the process and maybe throw down a roach warren. So now we're in trouble. Notice these guys are really efficient too. They realize that I'm dead. Like, there, there's really nothing I can do now, so they want to try, try to take out the other guy qu quickly. Um, unfortunately for them, best of seven, he's already thrown up cannons, which is the appropriate response. When one guy dies, and, you know, there's an overwhelming army here, the correct response is to turtle up. So, realizing that they can't do anything uh, to him right now, they, they do the right thing, and they pretty much finish off my, my base. And so, they've got to be feeling pretty good about themselves at this point in time, because now they've essentially made this game into a 2v1. But one of the things too that I would uh, that I would encourage um, you guys to do is like in Masters League, Masters League players tend to be very stubborn and so they refuse to leave. And there's still other things that they can do as well. Um, they can micro for the other player and since I'm a Zerg player and I have overlords, I'm going to start using these overlords and getting in position so I can at least be an early warning system for my friend. And so as you, as you notice, he says, I'll give you control. One of the really interesting things though to keep in mind is because these Zerg players went all in, take a look at the hard 
harvester count. Um, best of seven actually has more pro actually has more probes right now than all of these guys, and so now now they just tied. And so because of that, his econ is really good, even though he has no army. If he's able to survive to a point in the game where the econ can kick in, then he actually has a decent chance of winning this game. And so, taking a look at these other guys, now they're going to start gearing up for another attack. They want to end this game very quickly. Red has just thrown down a Baneling Nest, and Blue has transitioned to Roaches as well. And so, all the while, they're making some drones as well as a handful of units. But they, they pretty much, you can tell by what they're doing, is that they want to end this game. And so now, we're pretty much in a really bad situation here. Uh, I'm going to pause this real quick, just to mention that with... Protoss right now, there's nothing that he can do, like, it's not a good idea to go ground units, because if you go ground units, you're going to be trading like one-to-one -one versus these these Zerglings, because Protoss doesn't get any area of effect until like High Templar or, um, or Colossus, and so the good choice here is to go double Stargate for Voids, because Zerg players, they're inherently weak. To, um, to to air units in the beginning just because everything kind of requires a layer and so it takes a lot of time to get there. And in this case especially because they all went went kind of all in with a 10 pool build, they're going to be even weaker against Void Rays. And when you use Void Rays, notice how he's rallying them to a hidden position. You don't want to give away the surprise until um, you know until you absolutely have to. Because that way it gives the Zerg players less time to react. But you can see things are getting pretty bad. Um, Red is already starting to mass up his Banelings, and now we have some Roaches as well as more Lings inbound. So it's going to get pretty hairy, and with each minute that passes, best of seven, he's throwing down more and more cannons, which is a good thing to do because their army is going to get bigger and bigger. Um, and so now, I wanted to initially go over to their base, but because they're forcing the action, you have to engage right now and kind of um, give away the surprise. I also want to show you guys one little trick that I end up doing here, right now, and I'm actually focusing the Void Rays on, um, on my buddy's Nexus, and the reason for that is you can actually get away with this in this matchup because there's a cannon here and the Zerg AI naturally tends to focus um, you know, toward the cannons unless you're actively controlling it. But the other reason why you can do this is um, you want to let the voids charge up uh, charge up their weapons because the voids by themselves are pretty good against roaches but versus Zerglings are pretty horrible just due to their sheer numbers and so I wanted to give myself a little bit of an edge here. Um, what I should have, I probably should have started doing this a little bit earlier because there's not too much of a benefit over here because there's not that many units left. But one charge Void Ray can be pretty good. I thought the push was done, but then, you know, there's more units flooding in, and so I have to go back and, and stop this. But now, once their army is pretty much gone, the time to act is right now. You you can't um, you have to you have to press the action because now they've seen your units. They're already going to start countering, and you can see that uh, they're doing this appropriately. Red has just made a second queen, and he's he's throwing down an Evo chamber. If you look at Blue, his second queen was already up, and now he's getting sp he's getting spore crawlers as well. So you have to engage immediately, otherwise these units are going to be countered, and this is pretty much your only chance to win. The game. So I'm controlling the Void Rays right now, and so I'm kind of taking some of the APM burden away from my um, away from my friend, and it's going to give him time to make some more probes to, to defend, as well as get some more units out. So now, I ended up taking out one of the guy's queens, and right now I'm focusing down a Spore Crawler. And when a Spore Crawler comes up, and you have a choice between attacking a Spore Crawler and the queen, you always want to go for the Spore Crawler. One, because it does more damage, but two, it also lets you charge up your Void Rays fast, faster. And so now, things things are okay for us. We've uh, I'm on the verge of destroying Red's hatchery, and Red doesn't have any hatcheries, and any other hatcheries, and so we've pretty much boiled the game down to a 1v1. Notice too, um, best of seven, he, he's doing a smart thing. He's starting to transition from Void Rays into a ground army. And so because he knows that, uh, you know, the Void Rays have already, uh, they've already come up, and it's, and now the Zerg players have already started to counter, so he's gonna, he's gonna mix it up a little bit. And as you can see, by this point in time, after you kill off one guy, the other guy's gonna have a counter. He's got three queens, he's already got three Spore Crawlers coming up, and so I'm just gonna try to attack what I can to charge up the Void Rays. That's why you go after the Extractor, and 
uh, in a little bit of bad micro from his part, he, he isn't able to transfuse um, his queen, so he ends up losing two queens. I take down a spore crawler at the cost of one of the void rays, and um, but we're okay right now. So it looks like the way that his base is set up, you know, there's two spore crawlers here, still one queen left. I'm not going to be able to destroy his lair or really go after the, the drones, but I'm pretty much buying time, and I can deny some of these other spore crawlers from coming up. So... All the meanwhile, my friend, he's ended. He, he ends up getting a handful of zealots and stalkers, and so now he's gonna he's gonna reinforce me because the thing is, all that's left over here is really some some spore crawlers, and so he can pretty much handle that. And even though I'm not able to kill the drones, I am killing them indirectly because with each spore crawler I kill, I'm pretty much forcing him to make more and more spore crawlers until he survives. And um, and so already he's lost a significant amount of drones, but now this um, this army, the Zealot Stalker army, is going to come in for the killing blow. By destroying the, sp the spawning pool and pretty much killing his chances of making any additional army, probably doesn't have... Um, yeah, he's not really able to make any roaches in time as well. So a couple of key lessons to take from this game. Um, one, since this is uh, since this is going to be, be my very first team games cast, uh, I figured it was appropriate to show this game because it, it does demonstrate two things. After I get eliminated, I end up transferring resources to Best of Seven, and so it's, it's one of those things that you should always remember to do. The sooner you transfer the resources once you get once you're out of the game, the better. The second part is um, to be. Able able to stay in the game and still try to be useful. One is like, even though I don't really have any units, I do have overlords, and this, in this Zerg versus Zerg matchup, I can float them around, and I'm pretty much his early warning system. I can tell him when, you know, when units are coming in, where they're coming in, where they're hiding. Like, um, this area tends to be a spot where Zerg likes to hide units um, when they're getting ready for an attack. So I can do that, and then also shared control. So Best of 70 shares control of his Void Rays with me, and this is really important because it takes the... Um, the APM burden away from him, and since I have nothing, I can just focus solely on uh, on microing for him. And so little things like that ended up uh, allowing us to salvage the game. So hopefully uh, this was uh, this was useful for you, and you were able to take something from it. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for listening.